Good morning. Why do the wicked appear to prosper? Our reading takes us today to Jeremiah chapter 12, verses 1 to 4. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet let me talk with you about your judgments. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? You have planted them, yes, they have taken root. They grow, yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. But you, O Lord, know me, you have seen me, and you have tested my heart toward you. Pull them out like sheep from the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither? The beasts and the birds are consumed for the wickedness of those who dwell there, because they said, He will not see our final end. Oh, God's not going to see their final end? I have some doubts about that idea. Jeremiah asks a question. He asks one maybe, maybe that you or I have asked. Why do the wicked prosper? Why does God let them act out their violence all around us? Why doesn't he intervene and protect the innocent? They've been plotting against Jeremiah's life. Why does he allow that, even, even just for a time? Why is it even allowed to happen? But there are larger issues on. I mean, there is a war on between good and evil. How will the universe know who's telling the truth about God unless goodness runs its course and badness runs its course? So there must be at least some occasions where evil is allowed to run to its conclusion, where the consequences of evil are manifest. In a way, the earth is kind of a laboratory. It's, it's kind of a test tube, and right now we're in it. And you know, it's not that God needs to know, but there are so many intelligent creatures that he's made throughout this universe, and they need to know. And he's glad for them to think about it and work it out and figure it out and, and know for themselves what kind of a God he is. When he created these other intelligences, he gave them freedom. And they are truly free. They get to choose. We get to choose. So they watch and decide, to whom will we give our allegiance? That's a question that's being decided right now. Here in Jeremiah, we see people living as if they're never going to face judgment. They're just going to get to do whatever they want and have everything they want. They get to have their pie and eat it too. He will not see our final end. I mean, come on. They'll never be called to account, really? Well, of course, we all will be called to account. But the larger issue, there is a larger issue, and that issue is God's name. Will he clear his name? Will the universe say we can safely trust ourselves to him? Will Satan's charges against God and good be shown to be true or false? Your life and mine will show whether we choose selflessness or selfishness, self-centered or other-centered. You know, it seems like Jeremiah wants God to intervene a little bit more than he's doing. And maybe sometimes you and I want God to intervene a little bit more than he's doing, than he appears to be doing. Sometimes we're quick to plead with God to deliver us from trouble, and too slow in asking him to work righteousness, even at short-term cost, maybe to ourselves. Think about it. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, it's a bit irritating to be on a world in rebellion and uh, of sin and in rebellion against you and your kingdom. And so, Lord, we, uh, we are impatient. We want to get on with things. We, we want you to just intervene and just give us the quick fix. But you're doing something that's long-term, and, and you're asking us to trust you. Let us take a little bit longer and trust you. So, Lord, help us to do that. May we be surrendered to you. May you use us to accomplish all the things you want to accomplish so that goodness is verified for the universe and your goodness is seen by all. Thank you, Lord, for letting us have whatever little part we have in this. Here in this experiment on planet Earth, Lord, may you be triumphant. May Jesus win gloriously, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The battle seems long to us, but we want to let him use us for his glory. May that be our prayer. God be with you today.